Hi guys, welcome back to the Drive Life channel and in today's video, as you can see, we've got an absolute stunning car on the channel and this is the brand new BMW 530e. This video was made possible by Cotswold BMW Hereford, the premier dealership for BMW and Mini within Herefordshire region. Uh, big thanks to these guys, we've used them for years now um, on our own personal vehicles and we've had fantastic service every time. So if you're looking for a new or used BMW or Mini, make sure you check out these guys um, to find the best deal. So this is the second generation of the BMW 5 Series Hybrid. It's the facelifted new 5 Series. As you can see, it's wearing the 70 plate. And in today's video, we're going to be taking you around the car, uh, showing you what it's like to drive, showing you the interior, and just really getting to know the car. I thought what I'd do, as I live in such a beautiful part of the country, and... Um, this car is sort of made for grand touring. I'll take you around a couple of beauty spots that I know locally um, and we'll sort of explore the different dimensions of the car there. So as you can see, to start off with, we're in the wonderful Mortimer's Forest. Um, and I think this car, is it's a pretty photogenic car, isn't it? It's an absolute stunner. This is the latest uh, 5 Series generation. It's the facelift of the previous generation, obviously. Um, and as you can see, it's got a slightly bigger grill. Uh, we've got the, the sharper lines in the lights there as well. Slightly more aggressive front end um, as you come round. Basically, BMW have just made the car sharper in all the ways possible. This is the absolutely lovely M Sport spec. So what we've got is the nice big wheels, squared off exhaust there, rear diffuser, smoke tail lights. We've also got the, the rear privacy glass as well, um, and obviously the M Sport badging here. So. This, like I said, is the second generation of the BMW 5 Series. The car keeps locking and unlocking because I'm getting closer and further away. So I'm going to have to stand further away just to do this bit. Um, and essentially, BMW brought out the 530e alongside uh, the 330e previously. Um, the 330d... The 330e had done so well that the BMW thought they'd stick their hybrid power plant into the 5 Series. And there was the first generation. Like I said, this is the second generation or the facelift. And really, there isn't that much difference from the previous generation 530e. I mean, we've got the different styling and everything like that, but the actual the, the actual drivetrain alone stands as it was in the previous car. It runs a four-cylinder, two-litre petrol engine out of the 520i, um, and then combines it with an electric motor to give a combined output of just under 250 brake horsepower. That gives the car 0 to 60 in 6.1 seconds. So it's no slouch this car despite the size of it. What's really nice is that BMW have actually mounted the electric motor between the engine and transmission. So even when you're in electric mode, you still get the transmission um, the feeling of changing gear. So it's it's quite a, a self um a stealth hybrid this car a lot of the time when you're driving it you wouldn't you could almost put someone in it and they wouldn't know um it was a hybrid car the only way to know that this car is a hybrid is if we come around to this side here uh it gives us a charging port like so and oh, it doesn't open like that it opens from the inside and um what that does is it allows you to charge the battery um through either the the the, the cables that are provided with the car or um, the sort of charging stations that are around the country at the moment. BMW offer also um, wireless charging technology that isn't quite available in the UK yet, but essentially the plan is that you'll be able to drive onto um, a plate which will charge the car wirelessly in about two hours for 80%. On a standard wall plug, uh, this car will charge from 0 to 100% in around 4 to 5 hours. Um, it varies depending on sort of electricity around the area, but um, generally it's around that sort of time. Um, if you plug into a BMW i wall box, uh, which is the system that you can have installed at your home by BMW, then that will charge the car up to 80% in just, an, well, just over 2 hours. So it's really, really not that much of an inconvenience to charge this car. Then also you're, you're, you're more than welcome to use all of the other um, charging networks around the country as well. Now the way that BMW have mounted the back 
battery system is actually underneath the rear seats and what that does is it means that the car's center of gravity can stay low so you don't compromise the performance of this car it is slightly heavier than the standard car uh, about 500 kilos so this car weighs in gross weight about two and a half tons but you really don't notice that when you're driving it on the limit and as i'll show later on um, this car does move very well indeed uh, what that also means is that you don't lose any practicality in the boots uh, Normally in hybrid cars, the batteries are in the boot and that means that the, the, they eat into the, the rear boot space, but in this car they don't. Um, you still get a sort of standard 5 series size boot, which is nice. For the first time ever with the 530 as well, BMW have released a touring version. Now this is, will be available from now, um, this is September 2020, uh, as clearly denoted by the 70 plate. And so for the first time ever, you're going to be able to buy a hybrid touring 5 Series, which I just can't wait for. Um, it's going to be a really, really compelling package for company car drivers as well, due to the CAC savings there, but also for the family man um, who wants to the lower running costs of a hybrid, um, but the practicality of an estate car. Um, in terms of overall quality, this car is absolutely fantastic. I think BMW have just got the knack, really, um, in terms of the way it drives and rides. Um, the only thing I would say is that in towns, um, just driving here, I've nearly run over three people because they just haven't heard the car, the car coming um, in the electric mode. So that's something to bear in mind if you own this car, um, is that actually a lot of people don't notice you there uh, just because of the sheer sound and it's, it's quite a funny thing um, as long as you don't actually run anyone over but um, yeah as a car this thing is absolutely fantastic as well as the new estate BMW also offering this car as a 545e now this gives you just over well about 350 brake horsepower uh, it's just a slightly more powerful version of the car uh, but as you can see if we look under this bonnet here uh, this thing is a real real masterpiece of engineering we've got a standard sort of 20i engine here uh, with e-drive because what it is is it's combined with the electric motors and actually you can see those here uh, the electricity gubbings i'm not going to pretend i know what it all is but um yeah it's an absolute uh tech fest underneath the bonnet here and actually i think it looks quite good um the volkswagen gt that we have um really doesn't look as nice as this under the engine bay and i think that's where BMW are really sort of capturing car enthusiasts' interest in terms of their hybrid powertrain because there's, there's little to no compromise really in terms of the drivability and performance of these cars. So um, yeah, what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll drive us to the uh, next beauty spot and we'll take a good look around the interior uh, to show you guys how lovely this car is to be inside. Okay then guys, so you join us at beauty spot number two. Uh, as you can see, we've got the wonderful castle, the church and everything. And I'm going to take you through the interior of the 530 now, because I think this is something that is sort of one of the crowning glories of this car. It's an absolute stunner inside. Um, this this car, I've actually grown really fond of since I've been driving it from, from each of these uh, places. It's, it's sort of lending itself more and more to being a, a lovely, lovely car to drive on the daily. Um, especially with the hybrid powertrain and everything like that. It's absolutely stunning. And then when you've got views like this, so I'll see. I try not to get run over. But um, as you can see, it fits in perfectly with the with the surroundings so um yeah let's hop in the car and we'll show you what this car is about on the interior we've got comfort access here it's all keyless as well which is really nice um and immediately you'll you're met with these lovely leather seats now these are unbelievably comfy um believe me believe me guys um we've got our digital dashboard here as well and um as you can see it was just telling me off uh, and i've shut the door it's not um and you're met instantly with this swathe of uh, technology and just general loveliness. I'm just going to start the car so it pulls the steering wheel into my uh, desired uh, position. And as you can see, this car's almost brand new. It's just uh, ticked over a thousand. It was on under a thousand miles when I first got it. And um, yeah, it's, it's just been uh, one of those cars you just want to put miles on. Um, as you can see here, the it's running the latest. BMW iDrive system and what's really nice is the fact that actually it shows the uh, the correct car when you go on your vehicle settings so as you can see here this is the exact car that we're sat in right now it's the M Sport it's got the M Sport wheels and it's the same color which is I just think is awesome um, so 
as you can see guys it is it is a lovely place to be this interior we've got um lovely sort of aluminium trim here full leather wrap dashboard uh, we've got the larger infotainment screen as well um which is all operated by the iDrive system uh, that we all know and love um it's one of those ones you could write on as well which is really nice you've got your drive mode selectors down here uh, in this car we have electric hybrid and sport if you double tap that you can get sport individual which gives you more power we've then got our traction control here uh, we've got our battery uh, stuff here uh, i haven't actually pressed that button yet so um, we're learning together and we've got our parking sensors here as standard on bmws you've got your handbraking gear knob here as well uh nothing special with that um in terms of the electricness uh this is all pretty much standard five series inside apart from this battery button here and these rocker buttons here for the drive modes uh we've got good storage in this car we've got a lovely um that's it oh it's always oh, motorized buttery smooth um which is lovely we've also got a wireless charging pad down here now for, rather frustratingly this doesn't fit uh, my phone which is a samsung galaxy s20 ultra so um the latest biggest smartphones do not fit in here so they can't use the, the wireless charging which is a bit disappointing but you do have a sort of old style now uh usb port here as well which isn't bad at all we've also got two cup holders here uh, which is nice and then we have our uh, center console which i haven't worked out how to get open yet um if i'm honest there we go oh wow let's just look at the motion look at the action on that again oh smooth and yeah we've got a little bit more storage here not as much as you'd usually get um granted i think that's because of the uh the way that they've changed the transmission and everything around to fit the electric motor in um so but as you can see ample storage in there and then we've got a nice big glove box in there i'll move my bag out the way and then you can see that again damp to perfection there um bmw tend to do that really really well we've now got also why isn't it focusing nice big door bins here uh, we've got our boot opening and our fuel there and as you can see we've got the lovely Harman Kardon sound system now this sound system um, is a nice one uh, a lot of sound systems aren't actually that good but this one is uh, I mean the, the a lot of the, the premium sound systems are sort of just a bit of a fast they're just sort of the standard um, sound system with a fancy badge put on it but this one's been good um, I've sampled uh, several genres of music we, we initially started with uh, country um, and they performed very well uh, we then had a quick sample of the radio and listened to a few bits of the weekend so if you're that way inclined uh, you can enjoy it on this lovely sound system as well and also uh, just general radio stuff um, it sounds great so that's it for the front um, oh I haven't talked about the electric seats so these are also the memory seats it's all it's all the, the, the fancy comfort package and um, they're controlled down here uh, unlike the Mercedes which are controlled more up here um, and I must admit these seats are fantastically comfortable coming from a Volvo I didn't think I would ever uh, get comfy in a car seat again because those seats are just fantastic but to be fair to BMW they've done a good job here and just the way that the driving cockpit uh, forms around you is lovely I mean what my biggest gripe in a lot of these cars is that the armrest here and the armrest here aren't uh, sort of parallel or at the same level so you're, you're on the wonk if you're trying to if you're a wide person like me and you're trying to get comfy um but really uh they've done a good job on this bmw you've got the cruise control here which thank god is on the steering wheel i hate the ones with the little stalks they should all be on the steering wheel just like this everything you want is there you can essentially drive the car using this thumb uh which is lovely um and then we've also got our driving controls here now one thing that does annoy me about this is the fact that the plus and minus are on the top not where they should be like that they bmw could have put that button up there so we could have had the the plus and minus there but you know um i'm sure they won't lose too much sleep over me uh not liking it and yeah so this is the new look iDrive system as well uh we've got the usual so you've got your media here uh this does well it is pretty cool actually it does um wireless android auto which is fantastic uh it also you've got your radio your online music you can got you can stream directly from spotify so you can log in on your car to your spotify account and that will come up um as you can see we've got our bluetooth and we've got a screen screen mirroring as well uh which shows you essentially what's on your device's screen 
Uh, what's nice there is the fact that the Android Auto is wireless. So BMW have gone in properly um, and gone one better than everyone and just gone wireless. As you can see here, this is our basic uh, sort of display. I think it is touchscreen actually as well. Yeah, it is. Uh, so it's like it's like a giant lovely iPad. Um, it's actually probably better, better to use than an iPad as well. So we've got our sort of dates and everything here. We've then got our uh, various other bits, traffic, uh, your fuel details and your compass which again it's just all it's just all lovely it's um oh, we've even got news here as well which is good uh we've got our our weather there and a nice time thing so yeah you can really it's just just a nice thing to use we've then got a navigation which again with the touch screen works really well uh we can pinch and zoom and as you can see the traffic's all good where we are today which is nice um we then can also split screen it and well it's going to ask me to do something now we'll go back to the main menu um and then we've got our car information here which shows us your driving information your vehicle status uh, which is just making sure your vehicle isn't broken uh you can then also plan uh charging and everything like that which i think is really good is when you plug in the car it tells you various bits that you can do to um you can Basically, if you've got economy seven or something, so your, your electricity is cheaper at night, you can set the car to once you plug it in to only charge after a certain amount of time. So it's cheaper for you and things like that. Uh, you can also set your climate control. There is an app that BMW do as well uh, where you can set your climate control in advance before you get in the car. And it's all nice and even warm or cool for you, which is nice. Um, settings. This is just literally all of your settings as well. You've then got experience modes, which... It's a bit of a gimmick, if I'm honest. Um, we've got um, expressive, well-being, and um, executive, uh, which are all just basically it alters the inside of the car to make you feel more relaxed. Um, like I say, it's not it's not my bag that sort of thing. It's more of a gimmick. And we've also got caring car, which is where the uh, car will look after you. Um, so yeah so it's a bizarre bizarre thing this uh, bmw seem to be liking to look after people uh, we've also got your driver profiles as well so if you've got two different keys uh, which hopefully you have if you're buying this car then um you can set your driver profile so each person if, you, if you've got your, your wife or partner uh, they will um they can have a key and when they get in the car the car will do everything to their taste even even remembering the, the, the uh, climate control uh, the the way they like the, the sat nav and everything um, the way they like the steering wheel just literally every, even the radio station they left it on last time they got out of the car will be brought back to how it was so that is sort of one of these uh thing with modern cars is that there's just so much of that sort of convenience features we've then got our apps as well here um and all of this is just used on this lovely uh iDrive system it's pretty much um a giant computer in a car it's lovely and it's really nice and easy to use so what i'm going to do now is we'll hop in the back of the car um and show you guys what the interior is like as you can see when I open the door, it all changes and it's lovely. So here we are in the back again, and we've got these lovely leather seats. Um, knee room, this is where I have my driver's seat. And as you can see, touching my knees, but um, that's more the fact that I'm quite a reclined driver, as you can probably tell. From this angle, you can get a really nice view of the interior. Um, just a really, really lovely place to be this car. We've got USB-C down here for your chargers, 12 volt socket as well. And you've got your, your two vents for the passengers. Now these seats I don't think reclined, um, which would have been nice, but um, you know you can't have it all. Uh, but interior-wise, you've got a good view out as well. Um, your kids are going to be happy if you've got them or other passengers. And it's yeah, yeah, just a, a nice simple rear interior. I don't, within rear interiors, I don't think you really need to go too mad. We do have a pull-down armrest here uh, with cup holders. Uh, like so um, and this doesn't open so you can't store stuff in which is a bit annoying um, oh dear but um, I'm sure we'll get over that um, and then we'll take a look in the boot of the car uh, this is uh, one of the one of the things about these big saloon cars you expect them to have a good boot or oh, on the door here you've got a nice Harman card and speaker so you've got just as good sound quality in the rear as you do in the front um, now this should work with my foot nope not today um probably because i haven't got the key in the right place but this is an electric tailgate and as you can see the boot uh extends quite a distance but the only thing is it's quite a, a shallow boot so you've probably got two feet a foot and a half there uh, you do have a false floor 
which has got all my charging cables in it at the moment and oh I just pulled that off um, that'll that'll go there that's more storage we've got no charging cable here and yeah it's just it's just a usable space um, not massive but not too bad either and then we've also got our first aid kit in there so it's typical BMW in that regard if we, we can this is, this is one of those weird automatic tailgates where you can swing your foot underneath if you've got stuff in your hands and it'll um, sort it. As you can see, we've got our 530E badge there. Um, when we go into the car, there's a few features I just forgot as well. Um, this is the lovely electronic seats. And then we've also got, which I must admit is one of my favourite features on the car so far, heated steering wheel. Oh. What a treat. This thing, uh, it heats up really quickly. And this, this thing was like a big, spongy, nice steering wheel. And it's lovely to just have your hands warmed for a change. Um, you don't have to fiddle about getting vents pointing at, the, at your hands. It's just nice to have them pointed at or heated without any effort at all. So, um, yeah, that's just the interior of the car. Uh, we're going to go to our next beauty spot now and take you for a drive in the new 530E. Okay then guys, so I've shown you around the interior and now we're gonna take this for a drive. As you can see, uh, the scenery around here is absolutely stunning. So I'm gonna take you on a drive around these roads um, so we can get an idea of see how this 530E handles uh, just when it's driven really. Um, so what's immediately obvious is just how sort of refined and quiet it is. There's a little bit of road noise from the tires, um, but at the moment we're in electric mode, so expect that. Um, and this car, is pretty much built for uh, cruising. Um, we'll just turn out here. As you can see, it moves really well. This car. I've actually got it, got it in um, Eco Pro mode. So we'll put it in Sport. As you can see, we've got our acknowledgement there, and also we've got some more aggressive dials. And then. Um, just while we're waiting for these cars to clear, I'm going to slow down so we can take in the scenery. Um, this is one of my favourite roads this is. I used to drive it on the way to work, believe it or not. And um, it, this 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 5 Series, although it's like a brand new car, it, it feels, it's really comfortable, it's nice and easy to get on with, and you don't feel intimidated by driving it. It's quite a large car, um, it's similar size to my um, S18, nearly 5 metres. And on, on sort of narrow, twisty roads like this, it's it feels fantastic uh, if we put our foot down now we've got the petrol engine two litre and just like that you back up with the other traffic again so it's just, just a really really capable car this um, the handling sharp as you can see we're getting pretty good steering response there nice feel as well it is electric but um, it gives you decent feel I think BMW sort of got their got their stuff together when it comes to High, uh, electric steering, steering feel. Uh, one of the things you do have to watch out on this road is these sheep, uh, they have a tendency of just darting out in front of you. And um, I don't think Cotswold BMW would be very happy if I wrote their brand new 5 Series off uh, by hitting a sheep. So um, we're gonna take it easy through here. But um, yeah, just just this, this sort of thing is what the car does best. It's sort of a Jekyll and Hyde car where it really, if you wanna go, you can really put your foot down and um, it does it does exactly that or you can just sit comfortably I mean we've got a cattle grid here and suspension just soaks that up really nicely um, and even with the sport suspension uh, sorry that because it's an M sport suspension in sport mode uh, it feels firm but it's compliant enough that it's comfortable um, so it's just a really really lovely riding car it gives you that sense of a much smaller car, uh, sort of a one series size. You can, you feel like you can really chuck it about, and I think that's what BMW uh, prides themselves on is that um, sheer driving pleasure and that sort of thing. Uh, in, in cars such as this, it's difficult to achieve that, but um, BMW seems to have a knack of doing it. I mean, this is this is running 19 inch, I think, or it might even be 20s. Um, super super skinny low profile tyres and the ride is nice and compliant it doesn't get upset over bumps I'm going to take it down a slightly more interesting road here um, single track again with sheep on so <laughs> we're going to have to be careful but this is a really really stunning road to drive oh dear what's happened there um, 
again something that I used to drive to work uh, when I was working out this way and um, it's I think it's a good road to sort of work out the character of the car um, explore the limits so make sure we don't run over that magpie there it's a tight twisty one uh, with a holes in with a few pot holes in so I'm gonna be careful but as you can see you find yourself just picking up speed really quickly in this car it just seems to be able to do it I think because you've got that electric power um, you get that boost straight away uh, which takes you up to the speed limit quite nicely um, just take over this cattle grid here as you can see we come up to this lovely um, sort of wasteland country road and it, the fact that it jumps by four um, on the speedometer is a testament to how quick this car is and yeah as you can see this road is fantastic for the undulations just making sure we're not going to collect any sheep on the way and that we're not going to clatter any potholes there we go I mean I've been on this road before and there's actually been cows as well but yeah, oh, this, this car's fine, I'm not going to go too fast. Um, as you can see, we've got the head-up display. I'm not sure if that comes up on camera as well. Um, but that's another nice little feature of this car. It's almost um, makes me feel a bit weird, um, and the fact that you can sort of see it, but it's not there. Um, it's a bit sciencey stuff on reflections and things like that. Um, but yeah, this, this car, it is... Well, there's, you don't really need another car. Uh, this, this does everything. Um, the only thing I would say is that if you've got the, the touring, you get more practi yeah, practicality uh, with the boot space, because as I showed you before, this, this boot space is quite a, a narrow um, opening uh, and sort of storage area. So um, that's definitely something that I would consider if I was going to buy one of these, then yeah, we'd probably go for something like the touring. Um, but dynamically this car's fantastic you don't notice the extra weight of the batteries too much um, and that's because BMW uh, have placed them in a strategic way to make sure that you can sort of it doesn't compromise the driving character of the car too much so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find a way to turn around um, and we shall uh, what's going on here just shoot past here wow it's a very well secured tube um, just spin around and drive this car back through that um, off camera just so I can really uh, experience what it's like. Um, just turn around here, I think. There's no one behind. Actually, you know what? I'll do. I'll do the return drive on camera. Um, as you can see, we've got a lovely reversing camera here. Enabling us to see any things that we could potentially hit. And now we're just gonna give it a boot. And yeah, as you can see, it builds power really nicely. Uh, yeah, it's just, you get that surge, um, sort of the electric car surge initially, um, and it just really sort of pinched back in your seat. I mean, it's not, it's not amazingly quick, this car. It's, 0 to 60 in 6.1 seconds, um, 248 brake horsepower with the combined electric and uh, electric motor and the engine. Um, but for the, I think because you because you're aware of the size of the car, it does really feel like you're you're motoring on, um, and that is reflected in how quickly you get up to speed. I mean, now that's engine alone. It doesn't feel as fast because I've run out of range on the electric now. Um, but you do get uh, a 10 second boost on this car when you first put your foot down when you've got enough battery and uh, that that is what makes the acceleration difference um, but as you can see it's all it's all on this lovely digital dash here uh, we've got all our driving data here I mean um, since driving the car I haven't done the 129 miles in it I've done about 30 miles and um, we've averaged 45.8 I've had a bit of a play with the um, modes as well so that's not stop driving too sensibly yet we're getting better fuel economy than a normal diesel or similar fuel economy than a diesel regular uh, saloon car so um yeah that's that's sort of what this car is about i mean company car tax is another thing in this car i think company car drivers are going to love it uh, because the benefit in kind is really really low um and that's because the government are trying to encourage people to 
drive hybrid cars, they're, they're dropping the benefit in kind on them um, and just making them more appealing. So if you're, if you're a company car driver, I'd definitely consider looking at this car here um, just because of the savings you could have. I mean, that's the reason we went for our GTE uh, was because it was going to save us about three grand a year. So in, in the total ownership of the car, we saved nearly 10 grand um, just by getting a hybrid over a conventional um, internal combustion engine car. So um, it's a really compelling package and obviously we, we, we're placing our order for the 330E um, which is essentially the same as this car but it's just in the 3 series body so you, you get the same 2 litre petrol uh, twin scroll turbo uh, in internal combustion engine and you get the same electric motor uh, which is like I said earlier mounted within between the engine and transmission so you actually get that gear changing whilst in electric mode which I think a lot of people miss when they go to electric cars um, but this car you don't compromise on that at all it feels like a, a general combustion car to drive you don't notice that you're in electric mode a lot of the time uh, which I think is fantastic I think that's that's how BMW and other major car manufacturers need to make these electric cars otherwise people uh, it's too much for change for people uh, so I think BMW yeah definitely got it right with this car so we'll um, just go back over the hill again. It's half 10 in the morning, so it's nice and quiet, but these views are just incredible, aren't they? And I think there's, there's no better car to explore them in than this car. Um, the 5 Series is sort of BMW's car for road tripping. Um, and I think, as we're demonstrating here, it's very, very good at that indeed. In terms of its rivals, this car is probably based against the E350E uh, uh, Mercedes. You've also got the Volvo S90 T8, uh, which is a very expensive car, but um, a lovely car nonetheless. And this fits in a quite a competitive price. This car is starts off for around 45 grand uh, for the basic spec this is an m sport spec with a few bits on it so we'll go over the price shortly of this car as tested but um they do offer <laughs> just like that go at the speed limit um they do offer quite um quite a package for that money i think it's not it's not don't get me wrong you could probably get a two-year-old m3 for the same price and have more fun but um as a daily driver, this, this car can't be beaten. You've got the combination of the electric and the, the petrol, which means you um, you can do most of your sort of town driving on electric only. Uh, if you live where I live in Herefordshire, the charging is free, so you essentially get free driving in around the town, and you don't have that guilt of starting your car up and not letting it get up to temperature because it just you're just using the electricity so it's not accelerating the wear on the internal combustion engine or anything like that and it's just yeah giving you a really really uh convenient package i think i mean even just moving cars on the driveway if you can do that on electricity it saves wear on the starter motor everything like that and um, i think we'll we'll see these cars lasting quite well uh long term there is um there is equivalents to this that are also diesel. I think Mercedes do an E350 DE and C300 DE. Yeah, but Vol Volvo also did a V60 uh, D6, which was a similar setup to this, where you had the diesel engine uh, rather than the petrol engine. And um, they, I think, are even better because you get the sort of fuel economy of a of a diesel but the convenience of the electric power so if you're doing short journeys you don't have the issues with um, the DPS clogging up and everything but uh, yeah so that's that's it for the driving portion um, I'm gonna sum the video up now with my final thoughts on the car okay then guys so I've brought the car back to drive life driveway um, to give my final thoughts on the car so I've spent uh, the day with the car um, and I've chucked it through a few varieties of uh, scenarios etc and I think now I'm in a good place to sort of talk about uh, what I think of the car finally and uh, whether you should buy one or not so I've got the price list here of this car and this car is currently listed at £58,615 uh, so it's a pretty heavily optioned car I'll go through some of the options now 
Um, we've got the Phytonic Blue, uh, which is the colour, um, and I'm a fan of this colour to be honest. I'm not sure I would order my car in it. Um, I'm more of a sort of understated person in that regard. So if we take a look here at the uh, the X3, it's a very similar colour. Uh, but it's got the technology box. pack, which is two and a half thousand pounds, which is what gives us all of the extra, um, the extra size on the invitainment screen, uh, loudspeaker system with the Harman Kardon, Bluetooth wireless charging, um, all that sort of stuff. It's got the comfort pack and the M Sport Pro pack, so you've got everything: the upgraded brakes, the sport suspension that's adaptive, and uh, yeah, just this the, this car is a very very well optioned car indeed. And I think you can tell uh, from the looks uh, and from the, from the various bits and pieces that are on it, um, it's been it's been a joy to have for the day. Uh, my my only gripes are the size of this boot. Um, as you can see, it's quite narrow. Um, I discussed this earlier. It's quite a, quite a shallow entrance into there. Uh, it would have been nice to see that a bit deeper, but really that is one of the only issues i've had looks wise this car has had so many compliments today i've taken it various places i've had old ladies coming up to me and saying what a lovely car it is and i think that's something about this car is that you can always be proud to be driving it um you, you it looks good uh, there's no denying that with these wheels as well uh and the front the way that bmw has designed this car um it's an absolute stunning looking car there are a few few little gripes as well in terms of the uh, the electric range. I've averaged 21 miles uh, to this charge, uh, which isn't is nowhere near the, the 30 miles uh, that they claim. But I mean, nowadays with these electric cars, we we tend to sort of acknowledge that. Um, there are, I think, there is issue with uh, how quiet it is because um, I've nearly run people over, and I think that's more. Uh, people aren't ready for these electric cars despite the fact it makes a noise up to 30 kilometers an hour people are still jumping in my way so just something you need to bear in mind if you're driving this car but um, as a package this car is absolutely phenomenal f f ugh, I can't even speak phenomenal um, I've lost the words that's why um, and if I if I was in the market for a high high-end uh, hybrid vehicle hybrid saloon car such as this I would definitely go for this and the fact that you can get it as a touring um, is just even better I'd probably go for the touring over the saloon to be honest but um, yeah so I'd just like the time to take time to uh, say thank you to Cotswold BMW for lending me the vehicle uh, if you need anything uh, if you're looking to buy a car if you're looking to buy this car 58 and a half grand not bad for this car um, then I'll stick their information down in the description box below uh, Cotswold BMW Hereford and uh, yeah, go and give them some love. Uh, let them know that you'll follow the channel and they might be able to sort you out. Um, but uh, yeah, overall, guys, this is an absolutely gorgeous car. Um, I can't complain whatsoever. If I was to be given this or if I was to spend 58 grand on this, I would be very happy indeed. So uh, I'll leave that as a final thought. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.